most important, a great integral part of our aqidah about Quran is, or our faith, our belief about Quran is, that it is protected and preserved from any changes, alterations, any corruption of the text, as well as of the essential meanings. There can be difference of opinion regarding interpretation, but the essential meanings will remain the same, and especially the text will not be corrupted. So what we have with us, this Quran, is exactly the same Quran which came to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he delivered to his companions, رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين, and then they delivered to the Tabi'een, and then it came to the Taba Tabi'een, and so on, generation after generation. Qurra, experts in the Qurat of Quran, taking Quran from mouth to mouth. Actually, this written word and written, you know, shape of communication, it came later. Basically, Quran is Kalam, and it was conveyed through Kalam, and it was propagated through Kalam. But let me quote here three ayat, which are very important, regarding the preservation and protection of this book, which must be an integral part of our faith and iman. If a Muslim has any doubt about the preservation or protection of Quran, actually something is wrong with his iman. Maybe I don't dare say, but maybe he is outside the pale of Islam. If he doesn't believe that this Quran is mahfuz because it was guaranteed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, so I'm giving you three ayat of the Quran. In Surah Al-Qiyamah, Allah Ta'ala said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لَا تُحَرِّقْ بِهِ لِسَانَكَ لِتَعْجَلَ بِهِ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ وَقُرْآنَهُ فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَهُ ثُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا بَيَانَهُ These are four very important ayat of Surah Al-Qiyamah. You know, when Quran was being revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to exert himself to remember it, lest he should forget any word. He knew the responsibility, the word of Allah is coming to me, and I am the custodian of the word of Allah, and I have to convey it to the humanity, lest I should forget any word. So he was exerting himself, repeating and repeating and repeating, so that he could learn it correctly by heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assured him, لا تحرك به لسابقا don't take this exertion and don't move your tongue speedily with this book so that you can remember it very soon. Inna alayna jam'ahu wa qur'ana. It's on us. We are responsible. We take the duty. We take the responsibility. You rest assured. Inna alayna jam'ahu. We shall compile it and jam'ahu wa qur'ana. And then we shall make you read it. So actually this Qur'an was stored in the heart and chest of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by a special act of miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because the human effort was taken away from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You need not take this exertion. We'll do it for you. Inna alayna jamu'ahu wa qur'ana. Faiza qur'anahu fattabi qur'ana. Actually this second thing mentioned here denotes to another subject which I will discuss later. And that is the sequence, the editing and the compiling. This compiling and sequence and editing of this, these ayat, that is also our responsibility. We shall do it. Don't you worry about it. And when we fix that sequence and that compilation, then you have to follow that compilation. But in these ayahs, the most important word is inna alayna jam'ahu to collect it. That's our responsibility because in Arabic, you know, the harf jar, the preposition ala means a responsibility on someone. Al-Quran hujjatun laka aw alayka. Ala is the responsibility. Inna alayna jam'ahu wa qur'ana. 
فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَ سُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا بَيَانَا Both of these responsibilities we are taking on ourselves and absolving you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 